Okay, we're going to go ahead and start we'll now. We'll, we'll go back in yeah. session. Yeah, uh, cool. Richard, we'll go to the next slide. Some budget discussions. Mayor, members of the council, thank you very much for convening back in workshop. What we'd like to do this evening is to begin the process relative to your upcoming budget. One of the things that I would like to do as, as we begin, you have the budget on your electronic system, and I'd like to point out a couple of things that I certainly don't know how to use, but I will point them out to you, and somebody like Ron or Carmen or Gail will, uh, will do that. If you remember last year, there was a question regarding your computerization and the actual page numbers. This year, we believe that we have that worked out so that if we're referring to page 33, you'll be able to look up page 33 and both the uh, written book and your uh, electronic book will match. <coughs> also, if you look at the table of contents, any of the departments that you want to look at, you can simply touch that department and that department will come up. So it's a little easier to use, uh, I believe, this year, a little more computer friendly. I'd like to read a couple of comments out of the budget message before we get started tonight. The draft FY16 budget does not require an increase in the city tax rate of 64.2 cents, nor an increase in the water and sewer fees, nor the stormwater fees, nor residential garbage collection fees. The budget that is presented to you tonight and over the next several weeks is a budget that we took very seriously based upon the very challenge that you, paced, that you faced last year, which resulted in a significant tax increase. You told us at that time, don't come back next year with a budget that requires tax increases. When we first met with the department heads almost three months ago now, they understood very clearly that message. And as you've had the opportunity to look through the budget over the last several days, I'm sure that you have seen that they have held the line. Over the next several weeks, we're going to be going through the department budgets. But what you're going to find is they are about as vanilla as they get. There are very few decision packages that we're asking you to look at. It's a budget that will continue the quality services which you as a council have directed and provided to the citizens. It is a budget that lives within our means and it is a budget that also helps build the fund balance. It is a budget that also reflects the fact that we lost $750,000 in privilege license taxes. So altogether, this budget that we present tonight we want you to go through it in detail, but I think what you're going to find is that it is a very bland budget. Now, after hearing my melodious voice for the last four minutes, if tonight you decide you don't need any workshops and you'd like to move, especially for a special meeting tomorrow morning to adopt it, that would be fine with the staff. On the other hand, we are certainly looking forward to our continued discussions. Every year when we have budgets, there is a certain organization pattern to the budget itself you will see in the budget that every department is identified and what you see is the revenues for that department, the expenditures for that department, any decision packages for that department, and the personnel for that department, and comments all in one place. So you don't have to be jumping from page 21 to page 47 and so forth. It is organized the same way you asked us to organize it about five years ago. The last thing that we will mention to you is that when you look at the overall budget, you will also see that there is a significant reduction in personnel. That is a combination of efficiencies, it's a combination of addressing the loss of the privilege license, and it's also a reflection <coughs> that the economy is different in Jacksonville today than it was several years ago. And what I mean by that is you will see that we have eliminated a number of inspector positions whether those are building inspector positions or whether they're field inspectors that would normally be reviewing and inspecting water and sewer lines that are being put in a new subdivision. As business becomes slower, we do not need as many employees. And therefore, in some areas, we have reduced that. But I'll also say to you, in all areas, we did that without laying off a person. 
We did it by moving people around to vacant positions or simply eliminating the position when it became vacant. Did you say this budget builds the general fund balance? So yes, sir. But then it says here that the proposed use of a million, 1.9 million of general funds. That's correct. Okay. And we'll explain to okay. you. Okay. That's what Gail's job is to explain mm -hmm. those highlights. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you get to do the highlights. <laughs> yeah, so. I get to do the highlights. <laughs> so. The schedule that we're asking you to do is asking you to conduct is really every Tuesday for this month. Uh, next Tuesday, we have the appreciation dinner for the volunteers, so we're asking if possible. Now, if you can't do it, we'll modify the schedule. But we're asking if possible for you to come in at 4 and work from 4 until 5.30. Then we'll adjourn and go down to the Courthouse Cafe for the appreciation dinner for your uh, volunteers. Then the 21st, the 28th, the May the 5th will be your public hearing. If you're ready by that time, potential adoption. If not, we'll continue workshops on the 12th and have adoption on May the 19th. And of course, if you're not ready at that point, you can continue all the way until the end of June. Tonight, we'd like to give you the overview, the revenue forecast. We've already discussed how the draft budget is organized. We're gonna talk for a moment about department issues and then the proposed authorized positions for the year. We would hope also tonight that we'd be able to cover these departments and that on the 14th we'll be able to deal with uh, public safety. If possible tonight, we may even deal with finance and general fund departmental. And then on the 14th, public safety, development services, and public services. On the 21st, we'll primarily focus on the water and sewer, solid waste, stormwater, internal services, department issues, and then be ready on the 5th, if at all possible, for the public hearing and potential adoption. And as I said, if necessary, May 12th, May the 19th, or beyond. The revenue forecast for FY16, I'm going to ask Gail if she will walk you through these forecasts, please. Okay, um, for property taxes in FY15, we were estimating 23.1 million, and for 16, it's come down just a little bit. Um, Harry advised us that he thought there might be a few um, challenges to the valuation during the process this year. I don't think we've gotten any final figures from him. But we based our estimate on um, information provided by the tax office. Um, sales tax, we're estimating a little bit of an increase. We got the league um, estimate last week late and um, did not incorporate in here they are estimating a little bit more of an increase in sales tax statewide. We generally don't trend as well as they expect us to because we didn't ha take as big a hit. So um, the last few years, their estimate has been a little bit higher than what we've seen. So we might be able to adjust that just a little bit. Um, the solid waste fees are going from 4.2 to 4.6. And the transfer in from general fund to balance that fund has gone down just a little bit from 1.3 to 1.2. And before we leave that, I would remind you that uh, several years ago before you started the residential fee, that you were roughly 1.4 million, pardon me, roughly $1.4 million higher in your subsidy from the fund balance. For each $5 that you have uh, approved for the residential fee, that produced about $675,000. So between those two actions over a period of years, you're now uh, reducing the amount of money going from the fund balance to support residential garbage. You're still at roughly 1.2 million. And the stormwater fees, we're expecting them to be just about the same as FY15. And water and sewer, we're anticipating a small decrease. We're still seeing some decrease in the facility fees. So. If you'll look on page 10 of your booklet, it will show you all of the projected revenues. These were the larger ones. Let's spend a moment talking about uh, sales tax. <coughs> the county has until the end of April. April to actually determine if there will be any changes in the distribution formula. As you know, the state law gives them that ability. 
we have not heard any uh, suggestion by the county that there will be any change. This assumes that there will not be a change. Also, this does not assume any state legislative changes to the current law. So this sales tax of roughly $10.5 million basically is what I would call a status quo projection, assuming no legislative change nor any distribution change by the county. Any questions on your proposed, on your revenue forecast? Why the big drop in investment earnings? Mm -hmm. The interest rates are probably comparable to what they were the year before. Um, I think we overestimated our investment earnings last year. So you didn't, you didn't take in 70,000? I do not believe that we will hit that mark this year. Okay. But what we will do is we will give you an update on the investment earnings. And of course, because that's not on the screen, in the current budget, we had projected investment earnings of $70,060. For the coming year, we're projecting just under $20,000. But we'll give you a note on investment earnings. What's fund balance PB? That's PAL bill funds that have accumulated in the general fund. And in that, if you look at uh, page 10, the appropriated general fund balance for the, the current year was $2.6 million, and we're reducing that projection for next year down to $1.9. So we're still using fund balance, we're just not using as much of it. And so, so it's not going down as fast. It's, it's not, not going, going up. Yeah. Okay. You can see the gross numbers for the uh, different funds. As you can appreciate, we are not just one organization. We are multiple organizations. The general fund, of course, provides police and recreation and fire and the general government. But you also sit as the board of directors of the Water and Sewer Fund, of the Stormwater Fund, and Solid Waste. And in general terms, you can see the comparison. Now, some of those numbers uh, you will see in, in much greater detail, but at the end of the day, you can see across the board that generally the budgets are the same this year as they were last year. Sometimes they float up or down based upon capital projects or operating expenses that would not be classified as a capital project, but it requires the purchase of vehicles in a particular year. So you will see some budgets this year that went up because of equipment purchases, others that went down because there were no equipment but, uh, purchases. Tax rate information, your proposed budget is the same tax rate as the current year, 64.2. Four cents of that will continue to go to council initiatives. 3.84 goes to pay the debt service for the public safety center. That leaves 56.36 cents to run the general government. Last year, there were over 40 department requests for additional funding. This year, there were about 10 and after discussing, we decided that five of them really weren't issues. For example, where Pete Deaver needed an extra $10,000 for overtime, that's not a decision package. That's, you just have to put that in your budget. When it comes to decision packages, though, there were really five requests. Four of them I will not be recommending to you. One of them is a possibility, and we will be discussing that as we get into those department budgets. But again, you will see that with no recommended tax increase or fee increases and almost no departmental issues, uh, this is going to be a straightforward budget year. Whereas last year, I certainly gave you a lot of um, perspective slides. You will not have that this year. This is not a year when we need to do anything other than recognize that we provide quality services. Here are the cost of them. We're not asking the taxpayer to bear any larger burden. When you look at authorized positions, 
you will see that we have broken that out by general fund, water and sewer fund, and then all others. And you will note that overall we are going to go from 565 to 555 authorized positions. You will note that in the general fund there are two positions. In reality there are seven, but as you will hear in recreation we're asking you to consider moving some of the full-time non-benefited positions to benefited positions and we will be discussing the justification for that uh, probably next Tuesday when we get to Parks and Recreation. Again your overall expenditures and then let's talk about the budget assumptions. This budget is put together assuming that the county will not change its distribution it is put together assuming the tax rate will not change, the water and sewer rates will not change, solid waste fees for residential will not change, stormwater fees will not change, and that we'll be using 1.9 million of general fund balance. We also assume that health insurance costs will be absorbed. All of the actuarials continue to say that they believe that health costs will go up about 8%. As you know, the health fund is a fund unto itself. The premiums which you pay in for your employees are also, uh, I won't say matched, but there are other funds that come from employees who pay for the coverage of their family members. And because of that, the reserve, any surplus, is kept in a separate account. That account is about a million dollars. The last two years we have not passed a rate increase on to the employee for their family coverage nor to the city in that we have been able to use the fund balance to absorb any increase in cost. We're projecting the same thing this year for the current FY15 budget you budgeted about $400,000 to come out of that health reserve. We're now projecting that only about 91,000 will come out of that health reserve and that it will continue to stay very strong. So we're not recommending any fee increases at this time. Now, if between now and adoption date, whether that's May 5th or some future date, we suddenly see catastrophic events coming in, this recommendation may change. But that is the assumption on your health care. One other major thing that we discussed earlier and you gave us direction on is the assumption on fuel is that we will not budget at the 350 number or the 390 number that we had this year. We are going to budget at 315 and 345. You remember we gave you an analysis that showed what we were currently paying. We believe that these are reasonable numbers for this year. And again, personnel. Any questions regarding the budget assumptions that we have just been through? Everybody comfortable with those budget assumptions? Okay. If you don't mind, let's spend a few minutes talking about your departmental budgets. This is actually page 24 of your budget book. You can go to the index and simply tap Mayor and Council and that full budget will come up. As we said earlier, you sit as not only the Mayor and Council, but you sit as the Board of Directors of several funds. And therefore, the overhead allocation your budget is not funded strictly by the tax dollar. It is funded by revenue that is shared. And every year we try to project how much of your time is going to be spent on different issues. Last year we knew that we were going to be spending a lot of time on water and sewer issues with you. And you will notice that last year in your overall budget of roughly $412,000 that 186,000 of that we allocated from water and sewer, solid waste, and stormwater. Now, because we do try to, to do what I call open and honest budgeting, 
we don't believe that you're going to have as many water and sewer issues nor as many solid waste issues hopefully not as many solid waste issues as you've dealt with this year and therefore we have reduced the amount of contribution from those funds what that resulted in though is that from the general fund that contribution went up there are two other things that have impacted your budget on the expenditure side one is because we are involved now at not only the state level but at the national level relative to the League of Cities there is an increase in travel there is also the recognition that under your budget is where all of the advisory board meetings and city council meetings are paid the county commission has now opened their new center they're now broadcasting their own meetings I'm not so sure that they're not broadcasting even their things like their updates from uh, historical groups I'm not sure what we're doing as far as that total but when you look at your budget you say well why in the world did a council meeting our council budget go from 412,000 to 481,000 first thing I can tell you is nobody got a raise secondly we didn't buy a boat for the mayor and council so where did it go it, it is coming from the fact that you did increase for travel and because the county is no longer using the city the same way it did for media coverage you absorbed more of the total cost for media because we now broadcast all of the advisory boards live and of course all of your workshops and council meetings live any questions about your budget So that, that, that would be under item three on our expense, oh, expenditures to yes, sir, reduce you know, maintenance. And, <laughs> and so the fact that IT we're not video. getting paid by the county to record their meetings, is that kind of what you're telling us? Yes, sir. We, we do get paid for the use of our central equipment, but we no longer send personnel out to actually be involved in broadcasting. So it's the broadcast production part that we're no longer we lost that revenue. For. That is correct. Right now. What was what was that amount approximate? Do you know? Uh, I do not, but I will get that. That'll be a budget note for you. National League of Cities membership. How much? Is it worth six thousand? How much? Six thousand. That's for the membership. Well, let me membership, run down. Right. If if you'll look at page uh, forty-five, I'm sorry, twenty-five <coughs> in your budget book. Here are the fees that you pay for memberships. First of all, let me get uh, I see that. dollars for county production. Okay. To be a member of the League of, of the North Carolina League of Municipalities is forty thousand nine hundred and fifteen dollars. The North Carolina School of Government, which John uses uh, extensively on research matters and that's one of the reasons why you only have to have one attorney not a stable of attorneys well he could he needs that in his budget <laughs> <laughs> we could do that you're the one <laughs> I, I was wondering about that that's nine thousand three hundred <laughs> the yeah. chamber of commerce is two thousand eight hundred the north carolina Mayor. uh, metropolitan mayor's coalition is eight thousand <laughs> nine hundred the National League of Cities is 6,000, and then the Highway 17 Association is 7,500. Now, that is an association that I believe you're in your last year or two of funding because they're very close to actually having completed their mission. You might want to go back to, and you might want to underline the, you know, the importance of our belonging to such groups as the Metropolitan Mayor's Association and the League of Municipalities and the School of Government. You know, uh, you touched on the School of Government, but I think you need to underline the importance of those memberships. Yes, and let's talk about that in a moment. While we've been a member of the League for a long time, the League covers every city from large to small. What we have found is that when you, uh, when you try to serve an audience that large, you come into challenge as to um, I guess treating all of your members equally. We're subsidizing the smaller city. Yeah. 
So what we have also found from a legislative standpoint is many of the things that Jacksonville and cities our size and larger need to do, you really can't get done through the league because most of the league is made up of smaller cities. So we have different interests. So about, what was it, Ron, two years ago, the Metropolitan Mayors, a We've year ago? Around, it's been around about eight years now. Okay. Well, whatever it is, we, we need to be a member of that because that way the larger cities can get together and caucus and come up with things that we need to accomplish for us. Now, we still need to be a member of the, of the North Carolina League of Cities. I'm not saying we shouldn't be. But as with anything, different groups address different issues. And that's why we you know, believe that we should be into both. This, this League of Municipalities, uh, that, that does not include the insurances that we buy through them, does no. it? And where, where would that be covered under, just curiosity? That's in each individual budget. It's allocated out to each department. Each department. Mm -hmm. What about uh, economic development? That's in non-departmental, I believe. Yeah, the 30000 that we contribute to the... Uh, to the Economic Development Council. So this this really is then is just just dues. Yeah. It's not not any of the uh, insurances yeah. that we yeah. that we pay for. No. How do they how do they determine? Is it based on per capita? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on the mayor and council's budget? I think we're relying upon your opinion in terms of you think we're getting value hmm. from those particular agencies, value received and value yeah, spent, and it'll go yeah, along with it. We're buying, we're paying, we're paying our share of the lobbyists, I guess. Is, yeah, and that's is basically what, we're doing, really. what you're doing. Yeah, yeah the main you're, you're actually paying for that protection, and, and trust me, they, I, I'm sure we share all the emails with them from the. Oh yeah. You get all those right from the Metropolitan, from Julie White. Yes. But you know, you are correct when you, you're basically paying these fees for your lobbying efforts. Uh, and uh, once again, this year, we, we see that there are bills coming from the Senate or from the House or from both that could have a negative impact on our community. So being parts of these is great. Strength in numbers. Yeah. Although we didn't win, we didn't do too good. We didn't do too privilege good. License. No, privilege license. Uh, Is this where the city calendar usually resides? <laughs> the city calendar, <laughs> sir. Uh, it doesn't the expense actually... for the city calendar that was dropped is that non-departmental? You mean that, that used great decision by the city manager that you told me the next day? I can't believe that a city manager would think we should eliminate that. The answer is. It does not reside here, but we, when okay, we get to that budget, we will point that out so that you I, can... I will uh, probably remind you. Okay, I, I hope that you will. <laughs> but you know, the nice thing about the calendar we're currently using, See, it has 34 days in March instead of 31. Remind the manager about the calendar. Okay. I've got it down. Okay. Elections. Based upon the discussion that Carmen held with the supervisor of elections, this is what she projects will be the cost for your upcoming election. Of course, every other year you have this expense. So in the 15 budget, it was not there. In the 16 budget, it is. Now, talking about elections and lobbying, as you're aware, there is a bill that is circulating through the Senate and the House. And that bill would, there are actually two versions of it. One version would require all municipal and all school board elections to become partisan politics, not nonpartisan. Another bill would require that all of your elections would occur at the same time. So they would occur in November, and your city council election would be one of the 400 items that people would be asked to vote on. Now, whether those will be approved or not, I don't know. I will say to you that that's both the Metro mayors and the League are strongly lobbying against those activities. When you say the same time, you mean 
Is it still the off year, or were they going to make them change to? The all in the same election cycle. Oh, so you wouldn't have you wouldn't have staggered. You wouldn't have no, they're all in the November staggered. election. No, you would, you could still have the staggered, staggered terms, terms, but you wouldn't have a, an off year because we're off year. Correct. Election. You would be on they year, and you would be in at the same time as. Uh, well, we would save money because we saved money two years ago mm -hmm. because of the school bond issue because that we were able to split with them. But since we're on our own. What was the, uh, why, why are they saying it's going to go up? I mean, are they? Uh, because two years ago, the, the school, oh, school board, board paid. School board paid. paid, paid roughly, yeah. Yeah. But it's based on where people vote, isn't it? No. It's just cost. Cost. Oh, I thought there was an end reconciliation. No? Okay, pure cost. In other words, they hire as many people as they want for two voters or two thousand voters. <laughs> yeah, in Alba, yeah, in Alba that, County and, and city is very poor participation, as we were reminded at the governmental affairs commi uh, committee meeting uh, Monday. And that, that's the driving. I think that's the driving force behind the Senate bill to to do that. But you know, I, I still see with some of the municipal elections that you you may have some conflict there. With some of the things such as the section two of the voting right acts which we looked at one time before uh i mean maybe problems there uh but uh who's to know the, the uh house of representatives they've kind of put it in studies so that pretty much uh means they weren't interested in taking it up right now so but we will keep you posted we'll see what happens. Partisan. partisan was that where is that still is that uh, partisan was involved yeah yeah it's in the committee also when you look at uh, page 32 and 33, this is your legal. Mm. And what you will notice. Where's the coffee shop? Oh, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm going to look and see if there's any. <laughs> what you will notice is the allocation has changed significantly. And why is that? One of the major capital projects that you will have this coming year will be to acquire the easements to extend the system across the swamp through Burton Park and out to the land outside. City Attorney will be spending a lot more time there and therefore you can see that his general fund assignment has gone down, his water and sewer assignment has gone up. Overall he has reduced his budget by about six hundred and three dollars and that was because we did eliminate his coffee oh. fund. <laughs> no, just kidding John. Oh, Starbucks service. Yeah, yeah. No macchiato, just plain old coffee. <laughs> Page 36 and 37 is your manager's budget. Uh, last year we did have money in there for a part-time employee that was Earl Bunting. Earl has now completed his services to the city. He is not in the budget, therefore it has gone down uh, a little bit to cover those expenses that we had last year. Uh, generally, the allocation has stayed the same, and there are five personnel. Now, I'd remind you of the five personnel that are budgeted here include Carla, who's the switchboard operator. It includes Pam, Deb, Forney, Ron Massey, and myself. Those are the five that are covered in this budget. If you will look at the next page, 40 and 41 is a new section in your book, and that is passports. By your authorization, we have become a passport application acceptance agency. We don't issue the passports, we accept the applications. By federal regulations, we can charge a fee of $25. We have no ability to charge less nor more. It's set by the federal government. We also have the ability to charge a reasonable fee for pictures. Now that's not set by the federal government. So we're currently at $25 for the application and we charge $8 for the picture. Why $8? We did a survey of the uh, various uh, uh, drug stores in town that do passport pictures, they do $8. If we're going to compete, we need to be in that same market. We will have about $4,000 worth of expenses. 
and we're projecting roughly 51,000 in fees. So roughly $47,000, we believe, can be directed from this to the general fund. I would also remind you that we are doing this service completely absorbing the personnel time with city existing staff. We don't see a need to hire a full-time person for this, although I will tell you that we're averaging right now about 60 passport applications a week. And that's a combination of being applied for here at City Hall and also applied at the Center for Public Safety. Is there any follow-up work involved in that? Are we just processing the agency, send it on to the State Department, and that's it? That's it. <coughs> our, our job ends. Our job ends. Once it hits the mail room, our job ends. Okay. I thought I remembered a figure of $70,000 when we first started this. If you, uh, and the answer there is yes, mm -hmm. that is correct. For budgeting purposes, though, until we've actually collected money, I want to be conservative. Okay. If you take the 2,800 applications that we were told the post office was doing and you multiply that, you get a number much higher than 50. Okay. I'll let you do the math, or Gail. But for this purpose, we want to be conservative since we haven't been through it a full year yet. Of course, one of the nice things about it is all of the money that we have collected since we began this, the, what, the last week of February? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. All of that goes into the current fiscal year, and we didn't project any revenue. So if you pick up, you know, pick a number, 20000 25000 this year, uh, it goes into your fund balance. And the ladies, I have to give uh, Deb Forney and Pam uh, and, and uh, Debbie Jefferson and Nancy Ortez and several people in Mike's area. Uh, they are really doing an excellent job on this. So. Have you anticipated, Dr. Woodruff, that if the numbers reach a certain amount of passports being um, processed, that you would have to consider possibly hiring part-time or full-time employees? We don't believe that that would be the case. Okay. But I will say to you, all of our uh, projections are based on somewhere around 2,800 passports, and that would give you over $70,000. Now, if we found that for whatever reason we're now doing four or 5,000 applications, we would certainly come back and discuss that with you. But uh, again, uh, the difficulty, the, let me do that on the positive side. The nice thing about this, it gave us a new revenue source with almost no new expenditures. If you hired a full-time employee with benefits, you would barely break even. And that's not a, a pro forma that I could recommend to you. Uh, the fact that you're able to provide this service with your current staff, I think, is a real compliment that they have stepped up uh, what they do. How do people know in general that we're the provider? They can go on the uh, State Department's website. They can go on the Passport website. And what it does is it identifies where the passport acceptance agencies are anywhere you want to look in the country. So if you go on this part and you look up Jacksonville, you know, the mayor's friendly face comes on saying, come down to City Hall and we'll process your passport application. I'm surprised you're getting that many applications. <laughs> Uh, you got me. <laughs> With that comment, we will move on. Now, transportation planning. Is Anthony, Anthony here? here. Okay. Anthony, why don't you come up and uh, join us? This is page 44 and 45. get the page. Okay, I have that up there. You will notice a significant increase of 210,000 to 519,000. Let's talk about what that actually is. And you'll notice the bottom line is from 481,000 to 809,000. The vast majority of that is shown on page 54 and those, I'm sorry, 45. 45. Thank you. <laughs> That's why I don't do math. Dyslexic. On page 45, you will notice that you have a $50,000 uh, relative to median improvements. 
you have Plantation Boulevard, New Frontier Way, expansion of 304,000, and then Commerce Road extensions of 60,000. Those will actually come from sale of property. For example, if we do sell additional property at New Frontier Way, as you know, Millermont has purchased a property out there. They, they currently have an option on additional property. If they close on that option, then that money will be recommended to be spent for the connection that would make the road New Frontier <coughs> Way go from the current cul-de-sac through to the church property. But that's where that money will come from. If we don't make the sale, we won't do that improvement. Of course, you could still do that improvement, but you'd have to find a different funding source for it. Uh, as far as the Commerce Road extension, Anthony, would you and Ron talk about that one a minute? Thank you, Dr. Woodruff. That's a project that we actually submitted under the new STI process. Unfortunately, it wasn't picked up as a project on the TIP for funding. And so the intent there is to begin the project development process to uh, better identify actually what the scope of that project would be. And, and knowing more about what is entailed in actually constructing that roadway, we're hoping to craft the project scope for the next round of prioritization to hopefully make it more competitive. So the $60,000 there, it's actually shown as a general fund obligation, but our intent was to provide that as in-kind services from the MPO absorbed within the existing budget. But uh, the thought there is, again, to, to do the, the homework leading up to the next prioritization process to hopefully get that project funded. So have we actually uh, doubled, if you're talking about using your own salaries and so forth for most of that, yes, sir, are we I actually think, double funding I, that? I think we've actually shown that as a double dip. So mm -hmm. Okay, the, so we the, need to make, uh, on page 45, we need to do some adjustments. The 519 does need to be reduced. Okay. And we'll get council more information on that one. Though. Anthony, anything else on transportation planning that you want to explain? Well, just one thing that I would point out, sir, is uh, if you look at the fees for traffic impact analysis, mm -hmm. while we're seeing development level off with regard to development, uh, or excuse me, uh, building permit applications, traffic impact analyses are actually increasing. So maybe that's indicating that future development is on the horizon. In 2011-2012, uh, we saw a peak in TIA activity and the resulting development on Western Boulevard and, and other major roadways came about. Now we're seeing another peak in TIA activity uh, warranting the increase from $10,000 to $25,000 and hopefully after all that's said and done, we'll see more development on the ground. And remember, that's not actually an expense to the taxpayer in that, that those are fees that we charge. It's money in, money out. So if you only do five studies, you only have that expense. If you do 20 studies, you have that expense. So it's the developer is the one who is paying for that. And uh, it's What is only the first step in that? Is that somebody come in in the planning department talking about a proposed development and them explaining? They're going to need a traffic impact analysis? Well, there are varieties of different ways to get it initiated. Generally, what happens is they'll talk to Ryan or someone yeah. in planning and permitting, and before they actually submit a development application, they'll tell that individual to give me a call to start the TIA process. Okay. And that's just recognizing that the TIA takes a lot longer than, than the site plan approval. All right. So, gotcha. That's typically how it gets started. While we have Anthony, let's look at pages um, 48 and 49, which are your traffic signal. Now, you will notice that the 15 budget was over half a million and the 16 budget is 288,000. Why is that? Well, as you will recall, because we accepted the grant that resulted in the traffic computerization system, we had to agree to buy equipment and hire personnel. The equipment has now been purchased, and you will also notice that there are now revenue sources that are a little higher. When we go out to repair a traffic signal, we're now able to ask for reimbursement. That was part of the agreement that the council agreed to. 
So you'll notice that the NCDOT Schedule C expenditures have gone from 91,000 to a projected 179,000. And then Schedule D has actually gone down a little bit. Anthony, can you please talk about that? Yes, sir. And, and this is actually a case where DOT has made a liar out of me because last time I was in front of the council, I was mentioning that Schedule C we anticipated to be decreased because of the changes in the DOT funding formula. Uh, I believe at the time we were looking at about $40,000 worth of decrease, which was, I don't know, 20 some odd percent of the budget. But in fact, DOT has reconsidered that reduction. And as you see here in, in the, on the budget summary sheet, we're actually expecting an increase from 91,000 to 179,000. So. Uh, the good news is is that DOT sees the value in what we do, and so they're going to continue to fully fund the operation. What is that? What do you do there? What Schedule C? Is that the repairs and the... Yes, upkeep? sir. Schedule C is the reimbursement for maintenance activities. And Schedule D is... Schedule D is reimbursement for operations. So the equipment that we have in the TOC and our signal engineer. So if things break down less or more, that would change. Well, yes, sir. See. But but we also do maintenance, scheduled maintenance that we get reimbursed for. That's right. So a lot of that is based on <clears throat> scheduled maintenance on every signal. Schedule C does reimburse us for the uh, and, biannual uh, preventive maintenance. And exactly. a lot of the parts are actually provided to us by DOT. So even though something may break, we may have man hours out there, but the cost of the parts aren't necessarily borne by the city. You said biannual? Bi? Yes, sir. I don't know if I said that correctly, but we do preventative maintenance twice a year. Okay. So it's semi annual. Semi annual, yes. Yeah. Now, where'd you go to school? Uh, I know you went to North Clemson Carolina, City. that's all that's I'll say. <laughs> He's a North Carolina grad. A school in North Carolina, two schools. In North Carolina. That's right. <laughs> I'm proud of it. <laughs> okay. And then, from a staffing standpoint, you will remember that the contract required us to hire four people. So, where is the point three? Well, the point three is sitting at the end of the bench down here because we spread Anthony's salary through a series of budgets, not in any one budget. But you have uh, you have three people that basically work in the field. You have one person who runs the control center, and then you have um, a third of a person. Where are these people housed, the workers? Uh, the signal technicians are actually in Building B of the Public Services Complex. So Pete was generous enough to carve out a piece of his uh, utility area for us to build a, a mobile unit for a signal shop. And then, of course, Rob, our signal engineer, is in the Traffic Operations Center at the Center for Public Safety. Okay. Uh, let's talk a second about transit. That's going to be on page 52 and 53. The general fund does subsidize the transit. $386,000. That's generally the equivalent of 1.1 cents of your property tax. This year we had roughly 94,000, I believe it was, 96,000 riders this past year. This past year. Uh, the fare box is generally $1.25. Now why do I say generally? If you're a child, the rate is less. If you're a senior citizen, the rate is less. If you're an NC State graduate, the rate is more. But, just kidding there, so. But, $1.25 is generally the fare. And you'll notice in your revenues that we're projecting somewhere around $135,000 of revenue. And of course, one of the greatest benefits that the community receives is the weekend special service that we provide to the base. Anthony, would you talk about that? Yes, sir. We provide uh, what's called an express service to both uh, the air station, mm -hmm. well, all of the air station, Camp Johnson, as well as uh, Camp Lejeune, uh, it's escaping Court, me now. Courthouse, Courthouse Bay, Bay. Yes. French Creek. So there are two routes that service those areas, and the main purpose is to provide mobility to the servicemen who don't have 
uh, personal vehicles on base. And what's the fee? The fee is three dollars each way. So round trip is six dollars, and you actually get free transfer from the express route to our city routes if, if they choose to do so. Any questions on transit? How come uh, this the grants are seem to be dwindling, uh, especially the FTA fifty three oh seven? Yes, sir. Actually, uh, in reality, the FTA uh, 5307 appropriation went up but unfortunately what? because of the new DOT funding system transit wasn't funded at the level next year as it was this current year so if you look at NCDOT 5307 you see a 76.3 percent reduction in, in total authorization that appropriation and that's because the new process combines all of the modes together, whether it be roadways or bicycle, pedestrian, transit, and they all compete through the same formula. Uh, unfortunately, transit didn't fare very well, and there were only 10 projects throughout the entire state funded. So the only, the only funding that we are going to be eligible through DOT is $22,000 for uh, vehicle replacement and some planning expenses to take well, the advantage, FTA is worse yeah well the, to, to take advantage of all the FTA funding that's available you have to match it you have to have a local match previously the local match consisted of what the city contributed and what the state contributed since the state reduced the amount that it's contributing the only way for us to draw the entire FTA amount is to increase the city's contribution. At this point, we have chosen not to increase the city's contribution, which means that some of the federal grant cannot be drawn down. It's reserved, so to speak, for our use if we want to take advantage of it. But we have basically held our city funding at the same level as last year and computed the amount of 5307 funding that that will buy us so to speak so that's that's what we're dealing with right now so is this leveled off or is this trend no it no oh, the, the actual 5307 grant is based on population and everything and so the amount that will be available to us for this fiscal year is actually going to be probably higher than $1.3 million. It will be available, but only if we have the local match. So all we can apply for is what we're willing to match locally, that ratio. And so what the budget is showing is right now, we only intend to apply for $880,000 of the available 5307 funding. At the federal level. Yes. Right. And as Mr. Thomas was, was pointing out, because the, the state money has reduced, <coughs> that has taken everything down. And so the question that we have, is that a trend that what we see? What about 17? Is it going to go down again like 17? The state? going to level off? Yeah. That well, <clears throat> the, the, the state could go down to zero on that line. It could. So that would push the other one down? Mm, yeah, unless we were willing to pick up the slack. Yeah. And the other alternative, too, is to look at whether or not you want to try and increase fares, although that what that what that doesn't necessarily accomplish the same thing but anyhow because the fares have to be deducted first okay so when you take your operating expenses total first thing you do is deduct your fares and then the rest of it you break based on federal percentage local match so you know you can't get the same benefit out of a fare increase than you can get on a, a increasing the local contribution. Let's see if we can agree to this statement. Yeah. If the state were to next year reduce it to zero, unless the city increased its amount of money, 
then you would see the eight hundred and sixty thousand dollars go down publicly. Is yes. that a true statement? Yes. Even though the amount available to us through the federal government yes. is yes. around one point three, one point four million. We're not because we don't have as much DOT money to support, we're not able to leverage all of that federal money. So let me ask you if you agree with this. I'm not saying we should do this. But if the city council decided this year that they were going to add another 70000 of local money. What that would mean is that the FTA, the federal 5307 uh, money, could go back up to well over a million dollars. Yes. Because what's happening here, if I may use this term, the federal, the federal government is allocating more money than we're using because the match is not there. So there's money, if I may use the term, being left on the table. So the feds really don't care where the match comes from. The state could completely go away as long as the city was willing to stand in the gap and fund it all. We could spend every penny, 1.3, 1.4 million. <coughs> and it looks like we've just made it up by not buying buses. Is that and other capital investments, yes, sir. Right. There are buses included in this budget as part of our uh, annual replacement cycle because we would prefer to buy buses incrementally rather than in big bunches. So there are replacement vehicles and the DOT is willing to support that expenditure because they see that as maintenance, right? Uh, enhancement projects, say if we want to buy expansion vehicles for new service, uh, that is an enhancement of service which has to compete under the STI program. And um, it, it's really complicated. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, the other thing to remember, operating is funded on a formula that's basically 50% feds, 25% state, 25% city. Capital is basically 80-10-10. That's right. So. What are all the grant projects listed? Is that something I should have read before this meeting? Uh, well, those are projects that were previously approved by council. And, and because these are project budgets and because of the way the federal programs are set up, uh, those projects will remain open until all of the money is in fact spent. Do so, we have a list in his budget what these projects are? We can provide that. It's not included in this spreadsheet here. But a lot of the projects there are in the process of being closed out. In particular, the R grant, the TR-1002, uh, 1001, we just finished up the multimodal center planning project, which is one of the final expenditures there. And the replacement vehicles that we've purchased uh, okay. over the past several months, th that will also mm -hmm. draw down several of the others. What was 2016 doing? blank? That is this budget proposal here, sir. Where are we at on the multimodal project? Well, at the end of last year, we got final approval from FTA on the concept. So we submitted three things to them for consideration. It was a feasibility study, which we briefed the council on several times. Uh, it was also a categorical exclusion, which is essentially an environmental permit that would authorize us to proceed to the next step. Uh, and then there's also a Title VI evaluation that looks at civil rights issues. Uh, they, in fact, approved all of those, and now we're in the process of doing a financial plan to determine, is the project feasible? And given the fact that we own the land, what is our leverage power with that? Because the value of the land can be used to leverage the 80% federal match in order to build the, pro the project itself. So that was all cleared, that particular area of land? Yes, sir. As far as the ownership? Yes, sir. We got a letter, Mayor, from the folks at uh, Norfolk that, that deal with this saying that they did not see any kind of problem with a multimodal center going there as far as any kind of violation of the original grant uh, to to us. So we, we believe we're covering that. <clears throat> and Mayor, just as information, the, we completed an appraisal on a piece of that property that would be needed for the multimodal center. Uh, the value of that piece, and I think it was around two and a half acres, uh, something like that. The value of that piece was slightly over $1 million. So that's, that's good leveraging power against federal money to, to actually move that project forward. Yeah, that, that counts as the that can count as a local match. And, uh, so these grant projects I've just mentioned yeah, to you. Yes, sir. 
those are just recap, cap, capillation, capulations. That's a new word. <laughs> In Western North of Carolina, previous year's true. budgets. I can show you that. Well, is that right? <laughs> It, yes. That yes. that is a that is a summary of how much was budgeted in each one of those projects when it was approved by council. Okay, that's not a residual yeah. amount. Yeah, and they, and they, unlike the operating budget, they don't roll over. In other words, they stay in that uh, that grant account until the grant is closed. Okay, so it hasn't closed. It's in like some CD. Cases. It's like right. CD funding. Yeah, I understand. Yes, yes sir. Some blanks. Okay. Say thirty. <laughs> which time? Which time, time. Which time is it? all ready to go? <laughs> yeah. If it works for y'all, what we'll do, uh, Mr. Warden's having some difficulty with his uh, computer, so this is probably a good place to end. And if it's successful, we'll pick up here with community programs at our next workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is there any other? Anybody got anything else before we close this out? All right. Yeah. You have a motion. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good.